Well, hello, everyone. Just want to say a, a Merry Christmas uh, to you and your family. And I'm just uh, excited to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. And uh, we are still, uh, still recording our services and uploading them. Uh, we will revisit our uh, thoughts about in-service meeting uh, for the new year. Uh, we do have some folks in our church that's currently um, in the hospital uh, with the COVID-19 and also testing positive uh, with the coronavirus. So do pray for them and um, do pray for others that are being affected by this. This has been a totally, totally tough year for 2020. And I know that it's um, prayerfully that it, the Lord will just have it removed uh, very shortly at time. So just pray for one another, encourage one another. If you know somebody that's by their self, give them a call, let them know you love them and you miss them and you thinking about them. Uh, they could really appreciate that. We do have a special uh, uh, service lined up. We are going to do some Christmas carols uh, through to this afternoon. And, and Sister Ashley Overton is going to come and sing. And Amanda is going to do sign language to the song she's singing. And I know that will be a blessing and truly um, truly be thoughtful and truly blessed to, to hear that. And uh, Miss Mary Ann's on piano hiding over there in the corner. And so she's being good for the most part. And so... She's waving, but you can't see her. That's how good how good she is. But uh, and we're just want to hope and pray that everybody's safe and healthy, and uh, we just want to hope and pray that you have a merry Christmas, merry Christmas, and, and that's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus, the greatest gift it was ever given, and um, especially from from my house to to yours. I want to say thank you, and we love you, and we just we're just blessed to be part of this Haynes Flat family. Uh, there's there's nothing like it. Uh, if you ever are a part of Haynes Flat, you'll know what I'm talking about. And until you get a part of us, you never know um, how much of a blessing your church family is uh, to you as individuals, even if you're from afar, whether you're in Indiana or out in California, you're in Michigan, Ohio, wherever you may be, Kentucky, South Carolina, Georgia, wherever you may be watching this service, I just want to let you know that we love you, but most of all, we love you because Jesus loved us first, and um, he first loved us and gave his life for us. So we're excited to see what songs we're going to be singing here to this afternoon uh, today, and then we're going to turn it into the Lord, Lord's Word and see what we have in store for us. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll begin our worship service. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for a beautiful Lord's Day you've blessed us with and your many blessings. I just pray right now that as we come to you, Lord, one mind, one accord, and wherever folks may be, whether they're at home or with other family members or watching us on their phone or by computer or however they may be hearing the God's word, I just pray right now that you will bless them in a mighty, mighty way. Lord, I just pray most importantly that they, they know you as their Lord and Savior. They know the real reason for Christmas, and that's all about Jesus. I just pray right now if someone is struggling and and really having difficult times in life right now, that you will wrap, wrap your loving arms around them, give them a, a holy hug, as I would say, and let them know that you love them. Lord, they're not, they're not alone. You promised you'd never leave us nor forsake us, and you would come to us, Lord, even when, when, when we don't even know where to go, God, that you would give the, our spirit can groan in, in the inside, and you know what we need when we need it. Lord, you care us for us, even when we don't even care for ourselves. God, I just pray right now that you will this holiday season will be like none other. Not only will people look at the doom and gloom, but they will look at the sun, the S-O-N, of how bright and how bright of a star you came and how, how one of these days you're going to return to call us home for eternity. We'll have no more pain, no more viruses, no more sickness, no more, no more ailments, God, that it will be perfect, it will be holy. It will be eternity with you to worship you. God, I just pray right now that you be with Amanda and Mary Ann and Miss Ashley as we, as they sing, as they do songs here this afternoon. I just pray that they, that they will just radiate Jesus and everything that's said and done here tonight. Use me as your messenger, your mouthpiece. Allow me just to, to preach your word and let it will not return void. God, I just pray this holiday season will totally change people's lives. Lord, we have 2020. It's been very difficult and very trying, but... Most importantly, Lord, you've not changed. You never will. You loved us even when we're yet unlovable. And I just thank you for that. And I just pray right now that you'll be with this service. Bless it in a mighty way. I just pray that Jesus will get all the glory for it all. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Sister Amanda.
We're going to start this morning service with uh, singing the first verse of several of our favorite Christmas hymns. So the first one we're going to start with is the first Noel.
Amen. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. What a beautiful way to, to think about bringing in Christmas. And uh, Miss Ashley and Miss Amanda both done an awesome job and uh, truly a blessing. And I hope and pray that your family is, is blessed as much as we are. If you would, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1. I'm going to kind of go back and forth a little bit. I'm going to cover a lot of ground here today, uh, but it's uh, this is the way the Lord's led this week, and I'm going to be kind of covering the majority of the, the whole Christmas story and then some, but it's going to be a different focus, a little bit different, and um, we may come back and, and do a little bit more through the week. I'm not sure yet what our plans are going to be, uh, but we're going to flip-flop uh, from Luke, starting in Luke 1. And then go back to Matthew, and then go back to Luke, and then finish in Matthew. So um, I'll try to, uh, so if you want to put a tab in um, your Bible or your finger there, I'll start out in Luke, um, and then we'll go back to Matthew and, and come back um, back to Luke. So uh, the title t- today is, What Child Is This? What Child Is This? If you're in Luke chapter 1, say amen. All right, Luke chapter 1 is where we're going to begin what child is this? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful Lord's Day you've blessed us with. Another day that you've made that we can rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for these young ladies that were able to do the song and sign language and help play the piano and all, that, uh, all that's been going on. Lord, I just thank you for uh, Brother David and Chris and all their willingness every week to, to help record this and, and, and put it out there on YouTube and Facebook and the radio and however we can do to get your word out that it will not return void. God, let's pray right now this be your message and not be Travis Dunn speaking, but God, I'll just use me to, to speak your word. And, and I just pray, Lord, that we can realize what Christmas is all about. God, it's not about, a, not, a, not about what's under the tree, but it's the one that gave his life on the tree, Lord, on Calvary, and the one that died for the sin of this world, that covered all the sins, a multitude, that shed blood on Calvary, that, that washed away, whiter, washed us whiter than snow. What a beautiful story. It all started with a virgin birth, and it ended, uh, started with a manger, from the manger to, uh, Lord, to the cross, from the cross to the grave, Lord, and soon returning. Uh, Lord, our Lord and Savior, use me this time. Let's pray someone don't know you from the free pardon of sin. Today can be a day of salvation for somebody uh, somewhere. Lord, I love you and I praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I was thinking this week what God would have me to talk about, and and I know that uh, uh, Sunday school, our brother Chris Fultz is probably going to cover a lot of uh, the, the, the main story of, of the birth of Christ and and the Lord gave me a thought this week, and I hadn't. I thought, okay, Lord, let's go with it and see what uh, direction we go. And the the title is "What Child Is This?" and uh, that is the title of a song. And I just want to start out with uh, the first line of "What Child Is This?" It says, "What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whose angels?" Uh, greet with anthem sweet what shepherds while shepherds watch asleep a shepherd keeping this is the Christ the king whose shepherds guard and angels sing haste haste to bring him laud the babe the son of Mary this laud is praise external holiness this is bringing him praise and glory and honor and that's what we realize is what child is this uh, from a very from the virgin birth of Mary and that's what we're going to look at in scripture what is, it, what is so special about this child? Every childbirth is a miracle in itself, and it's precious, and every child is beautiful uh, in the sight of everyone's eyes, in the sight of God's eyes. And I want you to think about this child that was born, this child that we celebrate Christmas. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And so Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 31 through 33, is where we're going to begin Verse 31 says, Behold, uh, this is the angel speaking to Mary. And he says, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. What a beautiful story that he's telling this young lady, Mary. And and Brother Chris has been doing a great job covering that already in in the Sunday school hour. This is a story you should know, very familiar, that that 
the, that uh, the angel Gabriel came and appeared to Mary and told her, you're going to have a baby. And she says, how can this be? I, I know not a man. I'm not married. I'm just a young girl. But he found that she was highly favored. And this child is going to be in the lineage of David, which had been promised in the David uh, covenant years before. And all that, the tribe of Judah and the father Abraham was promised. God's word, folks, from cover to cover is perfect. It is holy. It is without error. It is beautiful. Beautiful. Look what it says. It says that, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and ever and ever for eternity. There should be no end. Man, what a beautiful thing there is in this kingdom. There shall be no end. So he tells Mary this. This is what this child is going to be. He is going to be the king of kings and the lords of lords. He is the son of God, the Messiah, the chosen one to save his people. Not only that, what does he tell Joseph? I'm going to go real quick here. You can just flip with me. I'll tell you where it is. You don't, we're just going to go one verse. Matthew, I read it last week. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And he shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. What is this child? What child is this? This is Jesus, the Savior of the world. That is one that is only that is worthy of to be called our Savior. And his name is Jesus. Not only that, look what happens as we get into the story. You know the story as much as I do. Um, as we look at this, the angel appeared to Mary. The angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. Now look what happens if you go on over a little bit more. Uh, this is another account that's very powerful to me. I always love it. I love the whole story of Christmas and what it's about. But you know what? Christ is is every day. It's every, his, he is the reason for the season. Every day. Not just one day a year. It's every day. And you look at this as we're going to look at the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 8 uh, through 20. I'm going to read this and I'm going to let God's word speak for the most part today, uh, today because that's where it's at. And I pray that you take time to read this story with your family as well and explain. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 uh, through 20 is where we're going to start to look at the shepherds uh, briefly. And there in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. These shepherds are not like the shepherds of the Old Testament, like David. These shepherds were outcast. These shepherds were the lowest of lows. They didn't really have family. You're talking about quarantined. They didn't have anybody. They were out by themselves. They wandered in the hills and the fields. All they had was sheep, and they were responsible for them. It wasn't the best job in the world. It was probably the lowest of lows. You know what? Jesus came to save sinners. Just as he comes to seek and to save, it don't matter rich or poor, red, yellow, black, and white. They're all precious in his sight. That's what this child is about. He came to save not only Jews, but also Gentiles. That's me, that's you, that's everybody. He comes. The angel appears to these shepherds abiding in the field, going on on their daily life out in the middle of nowhere. Folks, you may be sitting there and feel like, you know what, I'm, I feel like I'm in nowhere. The Lord may be knocking at your heart's door just now, saying, you need to ask Jesus to save you before it's too late. You know what, the way 2020's went, this would be a great time to say, you know what, maybe I need to get my life right with Jesus before long, before it's too late. I need to cry out to him before it's too late. He appears to these shepherds. Luke chapter 2, verse uh, 9 is where I stopped. And the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, don't be afraid, fear not. For behold, listen to me, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Hello, preacher done said that while ago. Not just to the rich, not to the poor, but everybody. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus came to save and to seek that which was lost. Woo! I might shout a little bit tonight. I'm going to be like Brother Ronnie Owens. I'm going to go down here on the front row and amen myself. But look what he says. That's what John 3, 16, we know what it says. John 3, 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What child is this? This is our Savior. Woo! The Son of God, the Messiah, the Chosen One. He lived a sinless, perfect life, willfully, Obeyed, obeyed God the Father, obeyed his mother and father, obeyed even unto death on the cross. Three days later, he said, I'll rise again. He did. 
He is sitting at the right hand of the Father waiting to return to get his children, to get his sheep, to get his flock, to call us home uh, for those that may be here still. The angel appears to these shepherds out the, and it tells them in verse 11 of chapter 2, For unto you is born this day the city of, uh, city of David a Savior, which is Christ the King, Christ the Lord. You'll go find this child born in a manger. Man, it's wrapped in swaddling clothes. Look what he says. And they shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel of multitude, the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. You ever thought about that? This child, this birth of the child, a child can get people excited. I don't know about you, but I love children. I do. I love them. I love when they're babies. I love it when they're babies because they usually don't talk back. They don't, they, don't, they don't make you mad. Babies are precious. I don't care if they got a stinky diaper or not. Babies are precious. Right? Amen on that one? Right? They're precious. But the very essence of a birth of this child, when they mentioned it, that he was born, and you would find him there, erupts the angels out of heaven, church, Grasp that for a second. That the angels shout from the rooftops of heaven and they hear this. Glory to God in the highest on earth peace. Goodwill towards me. You're talking about the angels got something to rejoice about. They realize how precious this is. This child has, has, this is their king of kings and their lord of lords. This is the one that they know who they worship and they praise him. And it came to pass in verse 15, the angels were gone away from them in the heaven and the shepherds said one to another, let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. I love it, this thing. You know what they're talking about? This child. Let's go and find this child in a manger in Bethlehem. And I bet they had some recognition, don't you? They probably said, hey, I know I heard there's a baby been born. They come into town, look what happened. And they came with haste, they ran, they left their sheep up on the hillside. Wasn't worried about that life that they was, they worried about their job. They walked away from everything. They was going to see that thing. You know what, there may be something in your life that you may need to set aside for a little while to focus on the child of the king this Christmas. You need to check on what's going on in your life and your priority and see what thing and things maybe we need to go get our things right with. And so they, they came and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they seen it, they made known abroad and saying which, which was told by them concerning this child. God is good, amen. And all the time, God is good. God is good all the time. Tells these shepherds about this child. Concerning this child. What is? What child is this? His name is Jesus. He's the Savior of the world. The Son of God. The true Messiah. King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory. Hallelujah. Right? Glory unto God in the highest on earth. Peace. Goodwill towards men. Verse 18. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary, I love this, Mary, here's Mary's mother heart. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. You know what? From the very birth, he started changing lives. These shepherds turned into missionaries going out and about. Nobody looked at these shepherds as somebody they listened to and respected. Truthfully, back in this time and this era of, of these shepherds, it was kind of, like I said, they were the lowest of lows. But Jesus comes to those, uh, those that uh, pretty much are the lowest of lows and the highest of highs. He comes to all. And so they go back, praise and glorify, and they go back and look on down in uh, Luke chapter 2 just a little bit further. Man, this is beautiful, I'm telling you. Some time passed, we realized that uh, they didn't, uh, they do the circumcision of co according to Jewish customs. Uh, we see the obedience of Mary and Joseph still following God's Bible and God's way. Uh, after eight days old, he can be uh, circumcised, which is the uh, tradition of this time. Goes all the way back to father who? 
Abraham, woo, hello. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, y'all need to get in your Bible and read it. Look where God's promises have been from cover to cover. It's all there. Read it, study it, remember it, put it on your heart. That's what it's all about. Here we go into it. Um, the prophecy, uh, or, or here we see Simeon and Anna were in the temple. Uh, we know that this, if you study Leviticus law, that uh, Mary had to, had to be 40 days past. Uh, if she had one child, uh, which is a boy, she had to wait 40 days at least until she was kind of cleansed and healed up before she could enter into the temple. So at least 40 days had passed, and they came back into the temple uh, to uh, go ahead and do their dedication there and, and different things. And we look at this in verse 25 of Luke chapter 2. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem. His name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. He had came, devoted himself to the Lord. And God gave him a promise that he would not die until he seen the Messiah. That he would not die until he seen the child of God. Woo! What child is this? The greatest child that ever was born. The Messiah, the Son of God. This is what he tells us. And it says in verse 27 of Luke 2, it says, And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of law, then took he up in his arms, and he blessed God and said, Look at this. They bring this baby in there. They bring this young child, this child Jesus. Simeon had been waiting his whole life. An older man. Look what he tells everybody. Lord, and I can see it now. I bet he was as loud as they ever could be in the temple. I bet it got somebody else's attention too. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation in a child. Man, woo, hello, preacher. My eyes have seen the Savior. My eyes have seen the salvation. I have seen the child that is the Savior of the world. What confirmation do you need? Folks, do you not believe in this child, Jesus Christ? Do you not believe that God's word is real? Do you not believe? Here we have the virgin birth. We have the confirmation from the angel. We have the angel with Mary, the angel with Joseph. We have the, the shepherds with the angels coming from heaven to shout glory to God in the highest on earth, peace towards, towards men. Now we have, uh, we have confirmation on earth in the temple of a worship place of a man. Didn't know who they were, didn't even know the story until God showed him in his heart and he knew that this I have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Who is this salvation for? Just the Jews? No. Just the Gentiles? No. For all people. Man, I'm telling you, church, it don't matter what you get on Christmas. If you've got Christ, you can experience Christmas every day. Unwrap the free gift that is given to you wholly today and experience him. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He will fill you up. He will, it, won't be some, it won't be a toy that you just pick up for a few days and enjoy. It'll be a joyful thing for eternity. Remember what I said? There'll be a king that will reign forever and ever. That's what he told his mom and dad. That's what God's word says. Woo! Goes on. He tells us this, that my eyes have seen salvation. He will, I have seen it before. And it says, I, I love this. Verse 32 of Excuse me, Luke 30, uh, 2, 32. And light to lighten to the Gentiles and glory to thy people Israel. He will be a light to the Gentiles. You know who that was? That was anybody that was not a Jew. A light. Bible tells us, John 8, 12, that he is the light of this world. Hello, S-O-N, the son of God. What child is this? He'll be a light to me. He'll be a light to you. What does it say? And it goes on. It tells us that, that uh, as you think about this, there's a time that um, 
They just might as well go there. Hello, here we go. Isaiah prophesied in this time. Listen to this. Listen to this. Isaiah 9. Uh, you go back and look at that for yourself. It says, uh, pretty much, nevertheless, uh, the dimness shall not be such. It was in, in her vexation. This is saying the darkness and despair will not go on forever. 2020 will not go on forever. This COVID-19 will not go on forever. This this hard times in your life that you may be going through will not be on forever. Jesus is the light. These people that are going through difficult times, hard times, even God's word and his prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1, he jumps down and says this in chapter, in chapter 9 verse 6, for unto us a child is born. Hello. Unto us a, child, a son is given. A son. S-O-N. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. What does that mean? They will rest. He will be the leader. He will be in charge. He will be the man. He will be the savior. He will be the king of kings and lord of lords. His name shall be Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Woo. the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Heard that before? There shall be no end prophesied in Isaiah's time. Isaiah prophesies about Jesus a lot, even to the point of death. He talks about this, his body being crucified on the cross and being marred and didn't even know that you had the image of a man because he was beaten and he shed blood on Calvary for me and you for the sins of this world. Do you believe? Folks, I hope you do. Because if you don't, you're going to spend eternity in hell. They were singing that Christmas song a while ago and I was listening. The first Noel, there is no L in heaven. You hear me? There's no L in heaven. There's no hell in heaven. But you know what? You'll spend eternity in hell without Jesus. Because in heaven's where Jesus is going to be. The sinless, perfect. What child is this? He's been told about and prophesied for years. Is that it, preacher? No, it's not. Know what goes on? The Gentiles will have light in this world. And goes on, it tells us in chapter 2, verse 33 of Luke 2. And Joseph, his mother, marveled at the things which were spoken to him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and arising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. He's saying this child is going to be rejected by many in Israel. He's going to have some tough times. You know what, this is kind of de de depressing maybe towards Mary. But she's got to realize it's not going to be easy being the child that he is. So she's realizing these things to understand these things. Remember I told you a little bit that John, the apostle John was there when Jesus was on the cross. And he said, and Jesus noticed his mother was he was being crucified and said, Behold my mother, take her away, don't let her see this. But you find his mother... Mary following him still yet after the resurrection, which is beautiful. Simeon blessed them and told them that it's going to be a difficult time. Look what the prophecy here it tells us. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, and thy thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Even the mother of God, the mother of the Savior, the mother of Jesus Christ here is going to go through some hard times. Folks, we're not promised an easy, perfect life here on earth. You know what, but it's amazing what we do have promised in heaven forever and ever and ever. No more tears, no more, uh, no more pain, no more sicknesses, no more viruses, no more nothing because of this child has came. Mm. It goes on, it tells us in verse 36 of chapter 2, and there was Anna, one Anna, a prophetess, a woman, so we have a man's point of view. Now we've got a woman, a daughter of fan. Uh, uh, Fanuel in the tribe of Asher she was of a great age and she lived with her husband seven years from her virginity and she was a widow about four score and four years which departed not from the temple but served God with fasting and prayers night and day and she coming in the instance gave thanks likewise also unto the Lord and spake of, uh, of him to all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem my redeemer lives who is my redeemer this child, Jesus, that we celebrate the birth of at Christmas time, at Christmas time. Mm, she was looking for that Redeemer, that King, that promised King, that promised Messiah, that promised one. Who is that Redeemer? 
man, you can go back to the Old Testament, look at that, the study of Ruth, kinsman, redeemer. Woo! I'm telling you, make you want to shout. I'm telling you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're missing it. You don't know what child I'm talking about, you're missing it. Redemption in Jerusalem, verse 39 of chapter 2, when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Remember Jesus was Jesus of Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and grace of God was upon them. Real briefly, I want to grab some other story. A few, a few years later, possibly, there's something that comes up in Matthew chapter 2 uh, that, that we always carry these, these uh, story a little bit. In Matthew chapter 2, real briefly, I want to look at this story. Just a few verses I want to talk about this story of the wise men. Uh, a lot of times we portray them at the, the birth. That's probably not always true. It, it's probably, uh, probably uh, they had been traveling from afar. They noticed a star of Bethlehem. They, they noticed some kind of something. They were probably kings or astrologers. Were they more than three? They could have been a whole caravan of people following them. But when you study these wise men out, they have traveled afar to see this child. What child is this? We've already been telling you a little about him. His name is Jesus. Hello, verse 2 of chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, it says... Let me just read verse 1 too in verse 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men, more than one, from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. <laughs> this child... They realized they were some kind of special stars shining over this area. So we see missionaries coming from afar. They wanted to come and see the king of the Jews. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I've been listening and watching news. They've been talking about a star of Bethlehem that's going to show. The, the, it's been very close. This is the closest time it's going to show on December 20th. 21st, probably be the best day, maybe the 22nd. Said that the star of Bethlehem, first time you'll be able to see it this close to earth in many, many years. Very powerful. Coincidence, maybe. Maybe God's timing, God's plan. 2020, look how bad it's got. Is Jesus getting ready to return? Do you believe? Are you, are you ready? Could be today. It could be tomorrow. Won't you think about something, how beautiful this scripture goes together that these men and this caravan seen this star from afar with what technology they had over 2,000 years ago and they knew something was different. And they just left everything they had to come see this child, this king of the Jews, this king of kings and lord of lords. The very inscription that was at, on the cross of his crucifixion. They made a makeshift crown for him when they, came, when they crucified him. And even uh, the, the leader said, it is, it, it, I have written what I have written. And king of the Jews, king of kings, making a mockery, but they realized, they didn't realize that that was the truth. And it is. Hmm. They have came to worship him. We know with the, the wise men and Herod, he he's gets irate and he, that's when he goes and, he, and they kind of take the children that's two years and under and they, and they go ahead and uh, they want to kill them because he knows that there's probably something special about this and we know that story, but that's not where we're looking at. These wise men, they come. They're traveling afar start, studying this star and it's still shining bright evidently for them to see it. This star of Bethlehem that we're supposed to be able to see here in the next few coming days, December 20th, 21st, 22nd, possibly the 21st, the best you can see, the star of Bethlehem. They said it usually happens about every 20 years or so. But said some, some, some writers and, and, and things say it supposedly it happens every 20 years, but you can't really see it really good. Um, said another account they, they roughly looked at, uh, was in, in 1623 when this occurred, over 400 years ago. Uh, not only that, some look back and say the best it occurred probably was around 800 years ago. Some, some scholars, some people that are um, very, very uh, 
are studying of, of this year of 2020, they look back and they said the best recall of evidence that they can see happened over 8,000 years ago. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? Hello? Most Bible scholars will tell you the Old Testament before Christ, B.C., and A.D. started, Anno Domini, which is the year of our Lord. That's when Jesus was born. Time was begin. That's how we kept records. They changed it over the years because they didn't like to put Jesus in there. But you can still look at it. They look at it. Uh, B.C.E. is what they call it now, uh, before Common Era. Before Christian area, a lot of people want to tell you. Because Christ came, and that's what made it all, all to come to par. But you think a lot of people look at uh, the Old Testament of covering about 6,000 years plus the 2,000 years that's already happened. Look what happened. There's, uh, some people look at the Bible and they say, uh, uh, here you see 6,000 years of the Old Testament has taken place. Uh, and now we've got to 2,000 years, so you're looking at 8,000 years ago. Uh, so there's a lot of years that's taking place. I don't know. It's just beautiful to me. And, and so you look at that, and so they could say over 8,000 years ago, there's a bright shining star. I don't know. But uh, look at that and think about that. There's some great things looking at. The Old Testament was written in uh, uh, the New Testament, and they said there was evidence of a bright shining star over 2,000 years ago, and that's when Jesus was born. So that had been 2,020 years, roughly, somewhere in that time frame. And we see the birth of Christ shining bright for these wise men. Look at the scripture. Uh, so I don't know. There's always beautiful things. You look at, in God's word. And preacher may just be out there for this evening. But it's all good. It's, it's beautiful in my mind anyway. Supposedly that shining star is, is shining, supposed to be shining again. As we look at verses 9 through 11. And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over them where the child, young child was. He was a young child at this time, possibly, like I said, two years of age from where in that ballpark. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And they were coming to this house, and they saw the young child. He'd already moved out of the manger, out of the barn. He had found, so he, there is some time there. He's seen this young child with his, Mary, uh, with his mother Mary and fell down, and they worshiped him. And they opened their treasures, and they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And they, being warned in a, in a, of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in their own country another way. These folks had came from afar. Jesus came through a virgin birth, told by the, by the angels, told mother, the, his mother Mary she was going to have a child. She was going to have the Savior, the one of the, uh, the Savior of the world, told her his father, Joseph, it's okay. You're going, to have, you're going to raise the Son of God. Not only that, that he appeared to, uh, to shepherds. He appeared to the wise men. They appeared unto uh, the Simeon and Anna. We see all these things. What child is this? What child is this? This, this child is Jesus. Prophesied of old. And so we look at this and we say, some people look back many years ago, from cover to cover, from the very essence of time when it's written, it's all about Jesus. What child is this? Folks, if you don't know who this child is, you're really missing out. And you, if you don't know Jesus, you're missing out. What child is this? This child is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior. The Bible tells us, uh, here, in, uh, here in the Bible, it tells us that um, Romans 10 says this. That if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whoso, the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. There's no difference between me and you because that's what Jesus took care of. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What child is this? This, this child is Jesus. Easy. As it goes, he gives you that free gift. And one of these days, they even read it last week. The Bible tells us that every knee uh, will bow in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow the things in heaven, the things in earth, and the things under earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. These folks came and they worshiped him. They gave their best. Best gifts they had to come. Folks, it don't matter if you're rich or poor. It matter if you're kings 
smart, intelligent or not, you have to know who Jesus is. You have to cry out to him. You're either going to cry out to him here in earth or you're going to cry out before judgment and you're going to recognize him. Please recognize him today before it's too late. What child is this? If you don't know him, today is your day to get to know him. If you've wandered far away and a long far away away, he's right there. Come unto me, you're over head and be laden, and I will give you rest. Turn your life over to Jesus before it's too late. I love you today. I want to say Merry Christmas, more of Christ. And it's not about Santa Claus. It's not about all these earthly things. It's not about presents. It's about the greatest gift that was ever given. And what child is this? It was Jesus. You shall find him wrapped in the manger, swaddling clothes. This child that was obedient to the Father, all the way in obedience unto death on the cross, died and resurrected three days later, hmm. soon to return. Soon to return. How about you? Do you know him? I pray that you do. If you've drawn cold and weary, pray that you can restore that joy of your salvation. Folks, take time to get in God's word. Recall it, put it on your heart. Don't be ashamed of it. Be able to pray that God will help you recall it, help you study it, help you witness that we'll be the only Bible that sometimes people may read, that people can see Jesus in us, that they know that we've got... So, you, so you, somebody may ask you, well, what do you want for Christmas? I want more of Jesus. More of Jesus and more of Jesus. We don't want these things. That, we want to come see the thing that's happened those shepherds found out what the greatest thing was, and that was this child being born as Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. He'll change you if you let him. How did they leave? Worshiping and glorifying God. How did the wise men leave? Worshiping and glorifying God. How did Simeon and, and, and Anna leave? Worshiping and praising God. He'll change your life. What child is this? Folks, get to know him. If you don't know him, get to know him. Get to know Jesus before it's too late. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I love you. Praise you. Thank you for the power of your word. I thank you for your scripture. God, I thank you for the essence of everything that you've put in our hearts this week. Everything that, uh, Lord, that we can just read and read it from black and white and red and white and see, uh, Lord, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is about it all. It's uh, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Lord, you promised us. You never leave us nor forsake us. You sent your son that, to be the savior of the world. And that's what Christmas is all about. It is about the redeemer, the one, the, the child of the king, the wonderful counselor, the mighty, the mighty one, God, the mighty God, the prince of peace. Lord, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful testimony. We could brag on you, call you all names that you should just praise and glorify you. I just pray, Lord, if someone needs to be saved, that today they can do that. They can call out to you and say, Lord, forgive me where I have failed you. Uh, Lord, that I'm a sinner. Uh, Lord, destined for a devil's hell. Lord, but I know that you can save me just as a thief on the cross. Today you shall be with me in paradise. Lord, I just pray right now that they can feel the presence of the Lord, feel the Holy Spirit drawing them unto yourself, that you can move in their life, that they can turn their life over to you, that all of us could say this, this Christmas season that we are getting more of Jesus and more of Jesus and more of Jesus. Lord, be with our churches, be with our communities, be with all those that's going, uh, that's uh, during these holiday seasons, God, that it, uh, you'll keep us safe, keep us healthy, protect us, allow us to continue to see revival breaking forth. I love you just now. I, I just pray right now that your will be done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen and amen.